So, hi everyone. In this video, we'll discuss a concept called the autocorrelation coefficient. So, this particular coefficient or this particular statistic is incredibly important when we're dealing with time series data. And it relates heavily to the concept of the autocovariance, which we discussed in the previous video. So, before that, let's discuss first what autocorrelation is. So, autocorrelation is probably a concept that you remember from basic econometrics or some basic um, statistics course. So it's essentially how two values values in the same series in the same series relate to one another, relate or correlate to one another or correlate. Now in basic econometrics, if you know that, if you know the underlying assumptions of, say, the classical linear regression model, we assume that autocorrelation is non-existent in the error term or that the autocorrelation there should be zero in order for uh, an assumption to be met. In time series, we have to adhere to some degree of autocorrelation because it's primarily given in our data. But before we get to that, let's first discuss this concept of an autocorrelation coefficient. So, um, Mathematically, an autocorrelation coefficient, so we denote an autocorrelation coefficient as tau, s, so it's an autocorrelation coefficient at a particular time s, so s can be 0, 1, 2, and so on. Okay, this is equal to the autocovariance at time s over the autocovariance at time uh, 0 or the initial autocovariance, okay? Now, those eagle-eyed and those uh, quick of us to remember is that um, this one here, okay, that autocovariance at lag zero or the initial time period is just equal to the variance of the model, that sigma squared. So we compute for the autocorrelation coefficient as uh, the autocovariance at a specific time s divided by the variance. Uh, so as such, for example, as such, as such, sorry, um, as such, say, um, say that S is equal to zero. So when we set S is equal to zero, so we're going to be getting tau S is equal to gamma zero over gamma zero. So that's just sigma squared over sigma squared. That's just equal to one. Since the autocovariance when s is equal to 0 is merely the variance of y, which is the denominator. And if we obtain, so for example, uh, say we have tau 1, that's going to be gamma 1 over gamma 0. So that's whatever gamma 1 is divided by sigma squared. Okay, so that's the value there. If we plot all values of our autocorrelation coefficients, we're going to get something called an autocorrelation function. So we'll deal with that as we go along. Okay, so one thing that's important is when you know, okay, if your autocorrelation coefficient is significant or not. So we need to uh, place a sort of confidence band or for the statistical significance of a particular correlation, autocorrelation coefficient so that you can know whether um, that estimated autocorrelation coefficient from your model is statistically different from zero. So significance of autocorrelation coefficient. So significance of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to construct a confidence interval And then what we're going to do is essentially we're conducting this test with this particular methodology. Our null hypothesis is that the autocorrelation coefficient is equal to zero. And our alternative hypothesis is that the autocorrelation coefficient is not equal to zero. So what does it mean when an autocorrelation coefficient is equal to zero? It's essentially that, for example, in this tau one here, if the autocorrelation coefficient was equal to zero, it's as if there is no correlation between 
a, a value of the series at time 1 versus the initial time or at time 3 versus the initial time. That's if the autocorrelation coefficient is equal to 0. If it's not that, then there's a degree of correlation between two time periods that you'll see. So how do we compute for that nine, uh, for the confidence bound? Well, we use a standard 95% for this class, for this moving forward. Standard 95% 95, 95 confidence bound. And the way that we construct that is, it's kind of simple. It's negative 1.96, which is a t-value for um, a 95% confidence interval times 1 over square root of t. So that's going to be your lower bound. Then your upper bound would be 1.96 times 1 over square root of t. And that's going to be your upper bound. So this is upper bound and this is your lower bound. Now, what is t in this case? Well, t represents uh, the total size of the, or the number of total time periods there are. So that's total time periods, okay? So just to reiterate, if the autocorrelation coefficient falls outside the confidence band, i.e. it's not contained inside of the, uh, in between the lower bound and the upper bound, the null hypothesis, okay, is rejected. So this, we take this alternative hypothesis, if not in confidence bound, that's to say that the co autocorrelation coefficient is significantly different from zero. However, if it does fall inside, inside that standard confidence band, then we say that, uh, so if this in CB confidence bound, it is uh, significant, it is not significantly different from zero. So there's roughly no uh, autocorrelation between one period and another. And that's the autocorrelation coefficient.